Everybody knows that PBR is notorious with the ski scene. Just go to any local hill and you're guaranteed to see a skier in the back of the bar sipping from a $3 Tallboy PBR. But what if I told you that heir to the Pabst Brewing Company was actually one of the most influential individuals in the Midwest ski community? Sit back, grab a beer, because today we are going to be examining a little bit of Midwest skiing history. What is going on Midwest skiers and riders? It's Matthew Zaransky with MidwestSkiers.com. I will start this video by saying that we're gonna be focusing on Paps history with Midwest skiing. As some of you guys may know, he has a legendary history with Bromley Mountain over in Vermont. So if you guys wanna read up more on that side of the history, I'm gonna drop some links below to articles. But without further ado, let's dive right into it. Fred Paps grew up on a farm just outside Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and his first memories of skiing were when he was about three or four years old. Now I use air quotes here because what he defined as skiing was being towed behind the family sleigh as they went into town for groceries. I also like to live dangerously. But just keep in mind that back then downhill skiing was almost non-existent in the United States. Several years later, Fred would attend the University of Wisconsin, go Badgers, and start one of the first Midwest ski clubs. Paps was a legendary ski jumper, and after finishing up at University of Wisconsin, he completed one additional year at Harvard Business School before heading back to work for the legendary Paps Brewing Company. Little did he know, however, a few years after that, he would change the course of downhill skiing history. Fred never lost his love for skiing, and in 1933, he left Paps Brewing Company and had the idea of starting his own string of ski resorts. When he was looking to start them, he had a couple of things that he knew were gonna be important. The first being the location of these ski resorts had to be close to metropolitan or large cities, since transportation was unreliable and sometimes even non-existent in some areas. The second was that he needed an area that was gonna have snow, but not too much snow. See, back then, too much snow was actually a bad thing because there was no way to compact it using snow cats or a groom it, having too much snow could actually mean that you couldn't ski for the season. Oh, Paps, if you only knew what we go through today for that. Over the next few years, Paps would decide on a number of locations to install his legendary rope toes and start some of the first ski resorts. He would end up making over 17 different ski resorts spread out through Canada, Eastern United States, and the Midwest. However, today we're just gonna focus on three of them in the Midwest that still exist today. About 200 miles northwest of Milwaukee in Wausau, Wisconsin, Fred helped place one of the first rope toes he's ever created in 1937. He would soon become the operator of this private ski resort located in Rib Mountain State Park. As many of you guys know, several years later and years of development, this would become Granite Peak, the ski resort we love today. Pabs did end up leaving the resort in 1947 to focus on Bromley, and while he was moving out there, he also took his J-Bar with him from Granite Peak as well. Across the state border, just outside Minneapolis, Fred had another vision for another ski resort as he installed yet another one of his rope toes. Unfortunately for him, due to some bad snow years, just a few years later, Fred actually had to close his operation. Now this wasn't all bad news because shortly after that in 1954, Chuck and soon to be Nancy Stone would take over that same property to create Buck Hill, which we all know and love today. Finally, in 1939 in Iron Mountain, Michigan, Fred installed yet another of his rope toes in an area that would soon be called Pine Mountain. This is the same Pine Mountain that is still in operation today. In addition to making all these hills in the Midwest, Fred was also an amazing marketer and avid skier. He actually offered train rides to both Pine Mountain and Granite Peak from Chicago and Milwaukee. These actions would actually jumpstart the ski industry as we know it in the Midwest. So there you have it guys. Although there have been a number of individuals that have been influential in Midwest skiing history, I truly believe that Fred Pabst Jr. might be the most influential of them all. That said, next time you guys crack open a PBR at your local hill, just remember that that beer is one of the reasons that we have skiing in the Midwest today. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you hit that like button, share with family and friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, as we have a lot of amazing content planned for this upcoming season. Stay safe out there guys, and until next time, I'll see you guys out there.